What's up guys, Neil back with another video. I know it's been a minute, it's always been a minute, um, but as you can see in the title, I decided to give Whoop, uh, the Whoop Strap 3.0 band a try. And uh, these are kind of my thoughts for my first couple of weeks of using it. So I'm, I'm gonna be going over um, what Whoop is, um, a little app tour, um, some things I like about the, um, the, the Whoop band and the, uh, the experience, some things I don't like about it, um, some things I miss about my Apple Watch, and kind of my general thoughts overall to wrap it up, whether I recommend it, who it's for, and yeah, so if that's what you're interested in, uh, stay tuned and uh, yeah, let's get into it. Okay, so what is Whoop? You may or may not have heard about Whoop before, but I would say they are a fitness company um, in the wearable space, uh, kind of similar to Fitbit, Garmin, um, Apple Watch, kind of in that realm, but more on the higher end for athletic performance. So their main goal is to unlock human performance. Um, so they have hardware and they also have software and coupled together, they are trying to give you more information about your body, how much strain you're putting on your body throughout your workouts, throughout your day, um, how is your recovery and how can you optimize balancing your strain that you put on your body as well as your recovery. So that's kind of what I think Whoop is in a nutshell. And uh, so I've been eyeing them for maybe over a year now. I've, I've known about them for a while, um, but uh, probably in the last year, year and a half, I was like, hmm, should I try out Whoop? Um, and so I decided to finally do it. Um, and so let me show you what, uh, what they give you in the box. Um, it's pretty minimalistic. This is the box. It's, it's really not that much, um, but here's the box. And what comes in it is pretty much three main things you have a small micro USB uh, charger, you have the battery pack, um, and this slides onto the band, and then you have the band itself. So that's kind of what it looks like on my wrist. Um, and then for some background, I've tried many wearable devices. So I've tried Nike Fuel Band, I've tried the Pebble, the Pebble Watch, not really geared towards fitness, but it did have some like um, things that it would track like steps mainly. I tried Fitbit, so Fitbit Charge HR, the Alta HR, and then more recently I am coming from the Apple Series 4 watch. So that is the wearable device that I have the most um, familiarity with, and that is what I'm coming from. So there are probably gonna be some comparisons that I'm going to be making uh, with the Whoop strap and the Apple watch. So that's kind of what uh, comes in the box. Um, so let me give you a little tour of the app. Okay, so we have the app brought up here. This is the overview page um, from today. So all of the information here is from today specifically. And from the top, you can see that my recovery is a 66%. Uh, my day strain is a 9.6 and I burn 1,373 calories so far. And the little note says, based on your 66% recovery, build an additional 7.6 strain to reach your optimal day strain of 11.9. So like I said earlier, they're really trying to balance the amount of strain you put on your body, as well as uh, how your body will be able to recover later. Um, and then further down the page, you can see the activities that I had today. So first one being my sleep, and the second one being functional fitness. And if you want more information, you can always click on that and uh, you'll, you'll get more information about those specific activities. And then at the bottom, you can see um, the battery percentage of my Whoop strap, which is 93%. And the last time that the data from the strap has synced with uh, Whoop server to, to get you more up-to-date analytics. Um, and if we swipe up, this wasn't very obvious to me from the beginning, um, but if you swipe up from this page, you're gonna get more information about an overview of kind of your week. So here it says multiple days below optimal strain, targets will promote recovery to maintain fitness, take advantage of high recovery days by building sufficient strain. So here the blue line is my strain. Uh, you can tell that um, my strain has been pretty low uh, recently. Uh, and my recovery has been pretty high. So I've actually been focusing on recovery. Um, on Sunday, you can see on the fourth, I played in a volleyball tournament. So my strain was really high. Um, so lately I've been trying to recover from that. Um, so yeah, that's a little more information about um, the, the overview tab. And if you tap, you can see the uh, specific numbers like 20.6 strain on Sunday. My recovery for that day was 85% um, and so on and so forth. So. You can see my strain has still been relatively low and my recovery has been um, decent. Uh, it started off good at the beginning of the week, but um, not too well recently. And so we can move on to the next tab, which is strain. So, so far I've had one recorded activity today, which is a functional fitness workout, uh, mainly my jumping workout for today. Um, and you can see the note, you're at a balanced level of strain for today. 
Going above 15.9 will promote fitness gains, but may diminish your body's ability to recover, for, recover fully overnight. Um, and if I swipe up, here is my kind of my strain overview for the week. So you're averaging a lower day strain, 13.9, than you did last week, 17.7. This puts you on track uh, towards a moderate week of strain. Um, and then, you know, you can see your day strain. So 14 uh, for the week, your average uh, heart rate um, here, and then uh, the calories you burn. So you, like I said, on Sunday, I played in the volleyball tournament. So that, that's why my strain and calories burn is really high on that day. So your average calories burned this week stay consistent with your recent average. So that's kind of the, the strain tab. So if we go to recovery, 66% uh, recovered. So that's in the yellow and at the bottom, your HRV and uh, resting heart rate are within their typical range indicating your body is recovered and ready for strain. So they use different metrics such as these two, uh, as well as your sleep to determine how well your body is recovered, which I think is pretty cool. Otherwise, like without like Apple Watch doesn't really do that or give you information about that so that's one of the main reasons why i wanted to check out whoop is to focus on recovery um, because for me the problem isn't you know working out putting strain on my body the problem for me is uh, focusing on you know getting that recovery and that sleep so that's one of the driving factors for me wanting to try out whoop and if we scroll up um here is our kind of overview for the last week um, so actually this has been pretty good um, um four days in the green three days in the yellow so nothing in the red which is which is great um, and you know you can click on these to see how your HRV is trending, your resting heart rate and your respiratory rate. Um, so that's kind of an overview of the recovery tab and then sleep. Um, so my sleep performance is 84% so this is pretty much uh, how much sleep I got versus uh, what they determined my sleep need was. So it says um, getting at least 70% of your needed sleep may be just enough to allow your body to recovery. Combine this with consistent bed and wake times for optimal sleep. So I can click on the hours of sleep and it can give you, you more information. So 19.9% of your sleep was spent in REM sleep. This is the optimal amount for healthy adults. And you can scroll down here to see like, you know, how many disturbances you had. Uh, how does that compare to your previous 30 days, your efficiency, um, the amount of sleep you got versus the amount of time you spent in bed, uh, your respiratory rate, and your latency. So pr pretty much how long it takes for you to fall asleep. Um, and then you can also see like when um, throughout the night you were spending different times, uh, I mean different types of sleep. So awake, light sleep, REM sleep, and deep sleep. So uh, more information there. And then if you scroll up, you can see how your sleep is trending across the last week. So overall my performance has been uh, not bad. Um, actually, yeah, I'm pretty happy with this. I definitely need to get more sleep for sure. So that's something I'm trying to focus on. Um, and you know, you can click through, see uh, how you're doing. Uh, so you can see my sleep need is always higher than the amount of sleep I am getting, which is bad. Um, so ideally you want uh, the hours of sleep to surpass your sleep need or at least be equal to, right? Um, and then here's the time in bed. Uh, I've been sleeping really late lately, which is bad. Um, but yeah, that's kind of an overview of the first, over the top four tabs. So if we look at the bottom four, so this is uh, the homepage, kind of the main one we looked at. We can look at here, which is the second tab on the bottom, and this is coaching. So we have your strain coach and you have your sleep coach. Um, so here, we kind of saw this a little bit earlier. Oh, whoops, uh, let me get out of here. So based on your 66% recovery, build an additional 7.6 strain to reach your optimal day strain of 11.9. Um, so that's kind of like the strain coach telling you where your optimal range is uh, for that day based on your recovery, which I think is really cool. Okay, so we also have the sleep coach. And when we read this, it says my suggested bedtime is 10, 19 p.m. if I wanna wake up at 8 a.m. Um, so that I can get my recommended time in bed of nine hours and 41 minutes. So if we click on this, we can actually play with this depending on what we want to do tomorrow. So if we wanna get by tomorrow, we can see how this changes. So if we wanna get by, then our recommended time in bed actually goes down because we will only need 70% of your sleep need. If I wanna perform, then um, this will be around 85% of your sleep need. And if you wanna peak, then you wanna get 100% of your sleep need and it'll adjust the recommended time in bed um, and your bedtime. And you can also change the wake up time. So if I wanna wake up at 7 a.m., then the suggested time to bed um, becomes earlier, right? Nine, 
uh, 9.19 p.m. So I think this is pretty cool. Um, so like based on how you want to perform tomorrow, you can optimize when you should go to bed and this is all based on like your recovery and your strain and all of that. So if you click, click on your sleep needed, it says this is the estimated amount of sleep you need tonight. Given your baseline sleep need, recent strain and sleep debt and any naps you may, you may have taken. So it's taking, trying to use all the data it has about you recently to you know determine your sleep need and how to optimize for however you want to perform tomorrow. tomorrow. So I think that's really cool. And so at the bottom we have performance assessments. So right now, if we look at the weekly, okay, so it says strain was optimal, sleep could use improvement. Your strain was optimally balanced. This is ideal for maintaining fitness and recovery. Your sleep could improve, or your sleep could use improvement to maximize recovery. So we can see here um, that, you know, my day strain um, and versus my recovery. So surprisingly enough, when I had high strain, so you see on the right, closer to uh, 21, um, my recovery is actually pretty good, which I thought I was, that would not be the case. Um, and then sleep consistency um, could also use some work. So, um, you know, when you're going to bed um, can play a big factor. Your strain was up 67% uh, this week. So compared to last week, uh, I had a more strenuous week, which makes sense. I played in a volleyball tournament, like I said. Um, and yeah, just some more uh, information about, you know, the types of workouts that I'm uh, recording. Um, so functional fitness, manual labor, powerlifting, volleyball, walking, weightlifting. Your sleep was down 1% this week. Um, and so you can see like how your sleep is doing over time, which I think is pretty cool. Um, and just some more information about, you know, your week as a whole. Um, and then at the monthly, I don't have enough recoveries yet, so um, I might make another video at the month mark once this is unlocked and um, yeah, get more data. So that's kind of an overview of that tab. This tab right here is actually pretty cool, so that's you, um, but you know, you can record um, and get metrics about your workout, uh, how much day strain you have, um, and things like that. So this is more for like social media purposes if you want to post this or uh, you want to post like the middle of your workout um, and you can go live, which I think is really cool. So you can see that my heart rate right now is 85 uh, beats per minute. Um, my day strain 9.6, calories burned. Um, so if I were to start a workout, you can see real time how my strain is building as well as heart rate. Um, or if you want to focus on strain, you could do that. Recovery, sleep, um, you get it. Uh, so I think this feature is really cool and I'll, I'll show some clips of that later. Um, and then here is the community, probably the last tab um, I'm going to go over. Um, but yeah, right now you can see I am on two teams, men 20 to 30 and volleyballers. So based on this, you can like see how you are um, compared to other people on this team. So like you can see uh, really quickly here, I am ranked 6,434th. Uh, out of 23,000 uh, men in this age range for daily strain rank, and you can change this if you wanted to. Uh, so this week, or you want to look at recovery. So if we hit apply, then you know, my ranking changes, uh, which makes sense. I'm focusing on recovery this week, uh, and then like volleyballers, you can you can see how you're trending against that. So based on like what teams you may or may not want to join, you can see how you trend against them. Um, the volleyball ballers one is actually pretty cool. Um, I remember seeing uh, Nick Lucena on here. So there are some, you know, Olympians that you, you'll find on the app and you can see how you trend against them. I don't know if I can find it, but um, yeah, I thought that was really cool when I saw that. I remember seeing Tri Board on here as well. Um, so that's really cool. So that's kind of an overview of the a tour of the app. Um, trying to get through that really fast. Um, sorry if it was long winded, um, but let's get into the things that I like as well as the things that I don't like. Okay, the first thing that I like about the Whoopstrap 3.0 is the form factor. It's a little bit more sleek than the Apple Watch. It doesn't take as much real estate this way. Uh, it's noticeably lighter. Um, and yeah, I think I, I like this form factor a lot more. It's just, you don't notice it as much as you do the Apple Watch. So that is the first thing that I noticed, like how, how light it is compared to the Apple Watch and um, the smaller footprint. I don't know if you can tell that much, but it is a little skinnier this way. 
And what that allows me to do is actually play volleyball with the, the strap. I don't feel comfortable playing volleyball with my Apple Watch because I feel like it gets in the way of my platform, but uh, I do feel comfortable playing with the Whoop strap. So as, uh, as you can see, I was able to wear it uh, throughout a full volleyball tournament and like no problem. So. So that is like the first thing that I noticed about the strap is that the form factor is very slim, very minimalistic. And um, yeah, I can like wear it more and like it's pretty comfortable wearing to sleep as well because so, you don't really notice it as much. Um, it does get a little bit bulkier because when you charge it, um, here's the, the charger and it kind of just slides on and now it's charging. So in this mode, yeah, it's, it's, it's bulkier than the Apple Watch but I'm not going to be playing volleyball with the charger on. So um, overall, I like the form factor. So the second thing that I like about the Whoop Strap 3.0 experience so far in the first two weeks of having it is the emails that they send um, from the beginning of, of when you like first open the box to like the first week um, because they, they'll slowly start teaching you about how to use the app, uh, what does recovery mean, what does strain mean, um, how to like sleep better, um, little tidbits like that, why HRV is used uh, as a key metric to measure recovery. And so you get to learn more about your body and uh, the different metrics that um, the strap is gathering so that you can like actually have more um, a meaningful understanding of, of the data that they're presenting to you. So I think they do a good job of slowly teaching you about the technology and about the, the strap itself so that you as a user can get a better experience. Uh, so that was the second thing that I like about the experience so far. Okay, the third thing that I like about it is um, the recommendations. So like you saw earlier in the tour, uh, it, can, it can give you more information about like Let's say you already built uh, 10, 10 strain today. So it's like, okay, based on your recovery from uh, last night, like the amount of sleep you got, um, well, we think an optimal state for you to be is, you know, under 15.9. And anything beyond that will promote fitness gains, but it's gonna like hinder your body's ability to recover. So just knowing like a, a range of like how much strain to put on my body um, is kind of helpful for like when you're working out or like how, deciding how intense you want your workouts for the day to be um, is actually pretty useful where it's like ac actionable information for you to like make decisions based on the rest of your day or like oh I like I went to ham the last workout uh, this morning maybe I should like you know recover uh, you know prioritize recovery the rest of the day and not add any extra strain on my body. Um, so the recommendations about that as well as like, hey, like tomorrow I want to perform, let's say like me, right? Uh, I, I jump a lot and tomorrow I have a big jump day or I have a tournament. Well, I want to peak tomorrow. How much sleep should I get? How much sleep do I need based on the amount of strain and recovery my body has been in the past few days? And like, you know, when should I be in bed so that I can optimize you know my performance for tomorrow so I think yeah it's, it's ultimately that balance between recovery and strain and like you have the information they're giving you suggestions on how to you know better perform tomorrow it's up to you whether or not you want to take them but you actually have the data like I want to perform well tomorrow well I should sleep by 9 p.m. so I think the data itself is actually really cool um, that 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 is mainly what you're paying for right they're not really selling you the the watch like at like one time payment watch uh, this is like a subscription model which I'll get into later which is one of the things I don't like about it but um, you're paying for the data so I'm happy that I like the data that they're presenting me so that's the third thing that I like about Whoop so far okay so the fourth thing I like about Whoop is uh, the feature that they have Whoop Live so I'm relatively active on Instagram um, somewhat active on YouTube I'm trying to get more active um, but uh, I showed you earlier like you can record your activities so whether you're like maybe you're weightlifting or you're doing sprints or you're playing volleyball you can record um, real-time with whoop live and it'll like display your heart rate during the workout at a specific time how your strain is building and and you can share that if you if you choose to do so or uh, maybe you want to use it to like monitor your workout while you're doing it so you could do that as well but this is mainly for like the sharing aspect 
uh, if you wanted to share it on your Instagram or any of your social media. Uh, it's, a, it's a pretty cool format to be able to share like the workouts that you're doing. So Whoop Live is pretty cool. I did notice a couple times that the app would crash when I'm in Whoop Live. So that's something that I did notice, but it didn't happen too much. I think if you keep the clips pretty short, uh, you should be fine. But I tried to record like a really long volleyball match when I was playing grass and it, it did not like that. So I didn't actually end up getting that clip. That game was probably maybe like 15 minutes long and I didn't get it. So uh, it might not work as well with longer clips, but like shorter clips, like minute, couple minutes, you should be, should be good to go. Okay, so I showed you this a little bit earlier, but this is the charger. I personally like it because like, okay, there's no way to charge this without this. So um, like you, you slide it on and now it's charging. Um, so I see this as a good thing. Like uh, I know sometimes I'm like, oh, if I, with the Apple Watch, like when, when, when should I charge it? Like, should I charge it right before I go to sleep? Should I not wear it to bed so I don't track my sleep? Um, when, when is the right time to charge this? Well, their goal is to keep you wearing the strap 24 seven so it can have all the latest data um, to, to give you recommendations, calculate your strain, recovery. And with this, you can do that because you are charging it while you're wearing it. So there's some pros and cons to this. Like if you forget to charge your battery pack, well, then you can't really charge your your your, um, your strap. But overall, I think this is a very smart way to do that. Um, and overall, I, I like it. Okay, the last thing I wanted to mention about what I like about the Whoop strap is, um, you know, there's no display, there's no time. There are just overall less distractions compared to like, say, Apple Watch, right? Um, there, You don't get any notifications from this thing. It, it literally just, measures your activities, uh, your sleep, um, and you know your heart rate, things like that, but you're not gonna get any notifications, no vibrations, nothing from this. So it's kind of nice not having as many distractions throughout the day. I mean, you could turn off the notifications from your watch, which I do from time to time, but um, kind of like that almost defeats the purpose of getting an Apple Watch as well, depending on what you use it for, but um, yeah, no notifications, I think it's a good thing. Okay, let's get into some of the things I don't like about the Whoop Strap 3.0. Um, this kind of might sound counterintuitive to the thing I just referenced, but because there's no display, um, you don't have time. Um, I think they could have, you know, integrated time very simply um, so that, you know, you just check on your, your wrist what time it is uh, versus like having to pull out your phone. Uh, whereas like on the, on the Apple Watch, I can just flick my wrist. There it is, 316. Whoop, I have no idea. So I wish there was time because I don't want to wear like a whoop strap on my left hand and like a watch on my right hand or vice versa. So if there was a, a way to integrate the time, I would, I would like that a lot. Um, yeah. Okay, second thing that I don't like about the whoop strap is that you can't start an activity from the strap itself. Like you need your phone uh, to be able to tell like the, the app, hey, I am playing volleyball, so let me start this activity. Where with the Apple Watch, you can do that straight from your watch. Um, one caveat to this is it does have auto detect, which surprisingly has worked pretty well. Um, so during that volleyball tournament, I didn't use my phone at all to track the activities. But when I opened my app later that night, I could see that it's like, oh, it detected me playing volleyball and it recorded those activities. So it does have auto detect. I haven't used it that much lately. Uh, volleyball is the main thing. Yeah, the only thing that I've used it, uh, but it worked pretty well for the time that it did. So, but as it stands, you cannot start any activity from the strap itself. So you're kind of tethered to your phone, um, which depending on you, could be a good or bad thing. Okay, so this is probably one of the things I don't like the most about this is kind of the payment model, right? So Apple Watch, one-time payment, uh, you pay it once and you get it for however long it lasts or however long you want to use it until you want to upgrade. The Whoop Strap 3.0 is a subscription-based model. Um, so you're paying monthly to be able to get the data and the analytics about yourself. Um, I get it. Um, that's the main reason why I like took a while to decide to buy it. Um, but so what I did was I bought 18 months um, in advance. And so it, it, it's a little cheaper if you do that, but then you're, you're like locking in 18 months. So with the discount code I found online, I paid $311.78 for 18 months. So you can consider this like an 18 month trial. So if you were to buy kind of like a comparable Apple Watch right now, 
which is the Apple Watch SE, that would be $342.22. So, uh, I don't know, depending on how long you think your Apple Watch will last, I've had this for, I think, a little over two years now, um, and where this will be 18 months, so a year and a half. Um, I don't like it, we'll see how I feel about it after 18 months if I want to like continue the subscription or maybe pay for another 18 months in advance again to get the cheaper rate but that's one that's one of the things I don't like is like you will pay for this every month that you decide to use it okay and the last thing this this doesn't like affect me that much um, but you cannot sync the data with Apple Health and I think they do that on purpose they want to keep all of the information in the Whoop uh, app uh, but you can do it with Strava and I think some other apps, but specifically, you cannot do it with Apple Health. Uh, maybe there's a roundabout way for you to do it, like go through Strava and then connect Strava to Apple Health. I didn't really try it because I don't care that much, but that is the last thing that I noticed is uh, you can't sync with Apple Health. So if that matters to you, then maybe this isn't for you. Okay, really quickly, things I miss about Apple Watch that Whoop Strap does not have. Okay, so we're still kind of like at the tail end of the pandemic. Um, so, you know, Apple had like um, a patch which allows you to unlock your phone when you're wearing a mask if you have your Apple Watch on. So that was really convenient. So without, I haven't been wearing, I don't wear both. So the last two, three weeks, I, if I have a mask on, I can't unlock it unless I use my, you know, my passcode or I bring down my mask. Small thing, but something I noticed. Okay, so second thing is, you know, if you misplace your phone around the house or somewhere nearby, you can use your Apple Watch to ping it and it'll, you know, make a sound and you can locate it. You can't do that with the whoop strap, so that's one thing I miss about the Apple Watch. And lastly, I know I said I don't like distractions, but the one distraction that's probably one that I need is phone call notifications. So I'm really bad about answering my phone. Um, so the phone call notifications from the Apple Watch would be something that I would leave on and I don't have that with my Whoop So I am definitely missing more calls uh, since transitioning between the two. Okay, final verdict. So um, Overall, I am liking my experience with the Whoop Strap 3.0 uh, There are some things I miss about my Apple uh, Series Watch 4 um, So what is my decision here? Well, I'm kind of strapped for 18 months. So um, I will continue to wear this for the next 18 months and I won't be wearing this for the next 18 months um, So here are my thoughts. So Me myself. I'm for those of you who watch the channel already. I am 5'6 I've been training to dunk a basketball since the end of 2017. I've gotten close uh, But I haven't quite got there yet and you know still grinding to get there. Um, so for me optimizing human performance Makes a lot of sense, right? Like five six trying to dunk not that realistic So I'm hoping this can help me achieve that goal may or may not, but that's kind of the idea um, So who do I think this is for? Based on my first two three weeks of trying it. I think it's for um, People who are ultimately like competing uh, maybe like your Olymp Olympics right or like a collegiate athlete or you know high-level competitive athletes. Uh, I think this makes a lot of sense um, professional athletes uh, fall under that collegiate, uh, maybe high level, you know, recreational sports. Someone who, or maybe you're doing like marathons, triathlons, things like that, where which require you to like train optimally to be able to compete. I think this is great for you. Um, for like maybe you're like a fitness enthusiast, and Apple Watch is probably like good enough, um, where like it, it checks all your boxes and um, you know you don't have to pay every month. So that's kind of like the threshold where I'd be like, mm, Whoop was probably like, you know, very, um, very competitive athletes who are trying to really um, optimize their training and Apple Watch is probably for like, you know, a step underneath that where it's like, you know, it'll track your health, your health metrics uh, to a certain extent and you still get you know way more apps you know you get the time you can time your uh your workouts your rest you just get more functionality overall but for like fitness purposes then i would go whoop uh so that's those are kind of my thoughts let me know if you have any questions i'll try my best to answer them oh and if you're interested in trying out whoop yourself 
um, check out the link in my in the description. It's a referral link. Uh, it'll help me out. It'll also help you out. Get thirty dollars off your uh, subscription. So uh, yep, it'll help the channel out a lot. Like I said, if you have any questions, let me know. I'll do my best to answer them. And if you want me to make like another follow-up video after the month, uh, let me know and I can do that as well. But uh, thanks for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed this content, be sure to subscribe, like, comment, watch my other videos, and um, I'll see you in the next one.